Good morning, class, and welcome to section 1.1, Chemistry in Context. So throughout human history, people have tried to convert matter into a more useful form. From our cavemen ancestors who converted flint into arrowheads and axe heads, um, carved wood into statues and toys, and even eventually used kilns to fire clay into pottery. And they made soap, and they used copper ore to make copper tools and weapons. From there, we can move on into the 6th century Greek philosophers who discussed a system in which they believed the world was created from four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. This may sound a little bit silly to you, but keep in mind that they didn't have anywhere near the technology or instrumentation level that we have available to us today. After that came the study of alchemy, which was the belief that you could take base metals and turn them into gold. It was also the belief that you could create elixirs and potions to cure disease and extend life. Now we know that that isn't possible today. You cannot turn another metal into gold. But from that scientific study came the study of modern chemistry. And you may have heard modern chemistry referred to as the central science. That's because so many other things depend on it. You have to understand chemistry to understand the making of medications and toxicology and material science and so many other things. And of course, to understand chemistry, you have to understand the scientific method, which includes observation and curiosity, and then making a prediction based on your observations, performing multiple experiments, and then hopefully someday those experiments leading to theory and law. Okay. Couple other definitions here. We have macroscopic versus microscopic. The macroscopic world refers to the things that you can see, right? The things you can see with your own eyes. Large scale objects, including solar systems. Microscopic objects, on the other hand, are things too small to see with the unaided human eye. Right? And this can include things like atoms, molecules, protons, neutrons, tiny things. And then, of course, we have another definition, the symbolic. And this refers to things that could have multiple meanings, like water. That could refer to a collection of water molecules, a glass of water, or even an ocean of water. There's no way to tell from the word itself what we're referring to. So thank you so much for listening to this cast, and I hope to see you again soon.